Hey, this is Sam from Sure. In this video tutorial, I'll discuss frequencies in the coordination workspace and why you have to pick the frequencies you actually want to calculate. A couple big versions of Wireless Workbench ago, we changed the way that inventory management and frequency coordination work. For those who are familiar with Wireless Workbench, the inventory view is a view that's designated to collecting and managing all of the equipment, the devices and the channels that comprise your wireless rig. And the frequency coordination view is one that's designed to help you pick the best frequencies for those channels. But they are separated. And by separated, I mean just because you have frequencies in the inventory view that belong to channels, that doesn't mean that they're going to automatically be included and considered for frequency coordination. So why is this different? Um, we wanted to make sure that the frequency coordination tools in Wireless Workbench were flexible enough to coordinate frequencies for any type of venue. Any type of show, whether that's uh, a small uh, band performance in a club or a pub, or a huge um, music festival, or a corporate event across different convention centers. In order to do that, the calculator needed the ability to ignore or not include certain frequencies as a part of a frequency coordination. An example of that is, let's say a music festival has two stages, stage A and stage B, in some huge park, maybe they're half a mile away. Those stages are so far away from one another that it doesn't even make sense to include the frequencies, let's say, of stage A in the coordination of stage B due to the distance uh, that they are apart from one another. You could probably reuse the same frequencies if the distance were great enough between the two stages. Now that's just an example, but that example illustrates why some of the uh, tools in the coordination workspace are purposefully separated from the inventory. So you'll notice in the frequency coordination view, I've got a scan loaded, but there are no frequencies in this list here. This list shows me all of the frequencies the calculator is going to consider as a part of frequency coordination. In order to bring frequencies into this view, I can do one of a couple things, but I want to go through the main use case, which is basically taking frequencies that belong to channels in my inventory and importing them into the frequency coordination view. So uh, well, uh, the way that I do this is in the Add Frequencies tab, I'll choose to select frequencies from the inventory. And this brings up a dialog that gives me a choice of which frequencies I want to bring in. Everything from the inventory, things from the inventory and CFLs or compatible frequency lists, or I can manually select. If I only wanted to bring in frequencies for, let's say, the Stage A scenario that I mentioned earlier, I could choose to manually select and pick from frequencies down below. But in most cases, everything in my inventory I'd like to be a part of my frequency coordination, then I would just choose this option here. Selecting OK imports all of those frequencies, and they're organized in their typical fashion by the type of device and the band um, that they belong to down below. I'll collapse this just for easier view. By this step of bringing frequencies in from the inventory into the coordination workspace, I have now specified to the calculator that these are the frequencies I want it to care about. And I can go about using the calculator in its normal fashion, calculating, making changes, and all that. Now everything in this calculator is really like in a sandbox. Any frequency changes that are made here are not immediate, immediately applied to devices. The only way I could make those changes permanent and send those out to devices is by using the Assign and Deploy workflow. Selecting that button here brings up the Assign and Deploy workflow where I can choose to assign channels to frequencies either manually or automatically uh, if I choose. Deploying these frequencies directly will send all those frequencies back out to the devices and actually make those changes so I can sync my transmitters and get the show started. So I hope this explanation was helpful in explaining why the inventory view and the frequencies that are there are managed separately from the frequency coordination view. If this tutorial was helpful or if you have questions, definitely let me know in the comments down below. And if you'd like to see different types of tutorials about frequency coordination or other topics, please be sure to let us know. Thanks.